Hi, I'm Michael Lieberman and I'm a supply chain security engineer. This presentation and demo is on putting the supply chain pieces together, a deep dive into the secure software factory. I will talk through what the secure software factory reference architecture is, what SSF and implementation of that architecture is, and finally, there will be a short demo showing off some of what SSF can do. So what is the secure software factory? Well, at a high level, the secure software factory is a cloud native but technology agnostic reference architecture for building software while tracking provenance. In other words, it's a refer reference architecture that takes your continuous integration and build systems and helps fill in the supply chain security gaps, like helping provide a chain of custody for your project from source code to package software. This chain of custody can then be used to help prove that your artifact went through all the appropriate build pipeline steps with appropriate co controls applied to them, as well as be used for analysis later in the event of a discovered supply chain vulnerability or attack. All right, uh, let's take a look at what the secure software factory is within the context of your broader software delivery environment. As you can see here in blue, the secure software factory more or less takes the place of your continuous integration or build system. It pulls in source code from your source code control, pulls in dependencies from artifact storage, performs various actions on them like lint scans, and eventually the build. It then packages the software up and pushes it out to artifact storage. The, area, the areas where things might begin to differ from a normal CI system is the inclusion of IAM at the top and the emission controller at the bottom. IAM here provides identities to the components within the secure software factory and you can use those identities to sign attestations on what is happening within the pipelines that run inside of the secure software factory. The production and mission controller can then be used to validate that only artifacts that have valid attestations signed by trusted identities from the secure software factory are authorized to run in production. Now let's dive in a layer deeper uh, into what the secure software factory actually is. This might be a bit hard to read, but you can follow along in the CNCF uh, secure software factory reference architecture document. The core of the secure software factory is the build environment, which is here in the center. And then from the top and going counterclockwise, first up, you can see that there's a pipeline framework which orchestrates the builds happening within the build environments. These are build pipelines defined as code, for example, Tekton, Jenkins, or GitHub Actions. Unlike a CI system with no or minimal controls, what types of builds and steps are allowed to operate in the build environment are constrained by an emission controller like Kiverno or OPA. This emission controller would have policy defined as code intended to constrain what is allowed to run within the pipelines. This allows you to have greater confidence that if you support a specific signed and attested version of a build tool, only that version is allowed to run in your builds. If you require all pipelines to include the step that generates a software bill of materials, you can enforce it through an emission controller with appropriate policy. Next up are the attesters and pipeline observer. A common attack against build environments is having those bills misreport their own output. You can imagine a compromised build could generate standard output and a report and, it's, and report its runtime parameters to look identical to a real build. A pipeline observer helps in this case by being a separate component that has access to record what is happening in the build environment instead of the build environment itself reporting uh, it's itself reporting its own uh, output. It doesn't prevent every case of this sort of attack, but it does help. An example of a pipeline observer would be something like tecton chains. The pipeline observer gets much better, however, when paired with node and workload attesters. The node attester will validate that the build is running on approved hardware, for example, a Kubernetes node you run versus one spun up by an attacker. The workload attester, on the other hand, will validate that a build workload pod or container has not been tampered with after initial orchestration. This means if someone attempts to modify the Kubernetes pod while a build is running, 
a workload of tester will be able to detect will be able to detect that and not sign off on the build. The moment, most common set of attesters is Spire, which generates spiffy identities, which are short-lived identities that essentially live only for the lifetime of an individual build step and are linked to the parameters of the build steps pod. These short-lived identities help by both reducing attack surface and limiting blast radius. The attack surface is limited by the fact that the identity is bound by both its short lifetime and by only, uh, and by only being valid against the initial configuration of the pod. The blast radius is also limited because if an attack somehow does compromise the build step and get access to the signing secret, that signing secret is valid only for a very short period of time and also only valid against signing the output of the compromised pod. The previous components mentioned help you enforce what build workloads are allowed to run as well as validating uh, as well as validating that those build environment workloads were spun up on appropriate infrastructure with allowed build parameters. But what happens if the build tool itself, for example, go build or Maven, uh, turns out to be doing something bad? How, how can we detect that? That's where runtime visibility comes in. By using eBPF and other tracing tools like Tracy or Falco, you can monitor what is happening within the build itself. So if a build is attempting to reach out to malware.com or something, your runtime visibility should be able to detect it. You can also use runtime visibility in helping uh, provide profiles for what your builds normally do. You can run builds in air-gapped and other isolated environments while tracing their runtime characteristics. You can then use these recorded profiles to detect anomalous behavior in builds in the future. If a build's memory syscalls follow a particular pattern, and then later on, you start noticing they're doing something quite different, like writing unknown data to executable memory. This should help you be able to detect that. These components all together help fill in the supply chain uh, gaps in your CI and build systems. Now, let's take a look at what an example build looks like. When using the secure software factory architecture, you shouldn't change your pipelines to no longer do things like security linting, SAST and DAS scans, or similar. Keep running security-focused build steps. The key thing that the Secure Software Factory does for us is help you generate provenance around your supply chain that you can have some confidence around. As this diagram shows, each step is recorded by the pipeline observer. The pipeline observer signs attestations regarding each step and forwards that metadata over to some storage. This can often be a transparency log like ReCore, a document database like MongoDB, or even be packaged up alongside your artifact itself. For example, it is common to push attestations to live, live alongside your container images in an OCI registry. By recording each of these steps and pushing them out, you can begin to generate a chain of custody around what is happening in your build. If your build artifact step reports the hash of its output is something different than what the publish artifact step does, then you know something has gone wrong. This also helps you enforce that if a piece of metadata is missing, like an SBOM, you can deny that artifact from being authorized for production. Now we've gone through what the secure software factory is, but what is SSF? SSF is an implementation of the secure software factory reference architecture. The, main, the name might still change, but for now, it's SSF. <laughs> um, SSF is a tool contributed by Citi to the Open Source Security Foundation, a sibling to the CNCF. Its purpose is to act as both a system for people to use to help secure their internal builds and software supply chain, as well as being a project with a secure supply chain. We plan to do this by following the various best practices and standards defined in open source groups like the CNCF and OpenSSF. Some of the best practices for supply chain security today can be enforced in various you know, SaaS build tools. However, that often doesn't necessarily fit the needs of some organizations and projects that might not be able to be allowed to use SaaS. This is also an issue for folks who are required to enforce um, different sorts of policy that are not supported by some of these other tools. SSF tries to help out here by enforcing at 
enforcing policy at multiple different levels. There are the SSF defaults, which are supply chain best practices that should be enforced regardless of an organization's individual requirements. These are things like pinning to a hash for a container image instead of using the tag latest, or that all build pipelines must contain an SBOM generation step. An individual organization, whether it's a company or organization like CNCF, might try to enforce high-level governance rules on all teams and projects that fall underneath them. These are things like naming schemes, allowed programming languages, and versions of build tools. Underneath that, there might be further restrictions based on an individual's team's requirements. An organization might say Python, Java, and Go have all been approved, but a specific team might say that only Go is allowed for their project. You can then further constrain configuration and policy to individual projects, so a new project under a team that uses Go might be, re might be required to use version 1.18 or above. These constraints help organizations, teams, and projects better enforce rules and controls, and thus help increase the confidence in what the provenance attestations are telling you is in fact true. Now, how does SSF handle and use this configuration. It does so by using a configuration language called Q. Q, um, if you're not aware, is a language that has been seen as a successor to Google's internal configuration language and similar languages like JSON. It helps us instead. Uh, it helps us by instead of having to write individual YAML for both our Tecton pipelines as well as Kiverno policy as code to enforce the rules. We can uh, enforce the rules. We can write specifications in Q, which lets us easily generate interfaces. So a lot of the cross management of Kiverno, config maps, tecton tasks, and pipelines can all be managed from a single set of specifications. As mentioned in the previous slide, those specifications can be further refined as we need to for individual teams or projects. All right, um, now let's take a quick look at what SSF looks like in action. Um, if you want to, you can follow along at the Git repo uh, listed here. All right, so I already have um, SSF running, which it's running on Minikube. So if I just quickly show off uh, Minikube status here, you can see there's a Minikube running, and if I run uh, whoops. Um, you can see, you know, there's a bunch of different namespaces with a bunch of different things in them. All right. So I already have um, the initial configuration set up. So it already has a key uh, for this particular build set up. Um, and I'm just going to run an example uh, build packs build here. And to be clear, this is mostly just running um, Tecton, but it's running it within the context of sort of a secure software factory configuration and setup. So it's running with all the various best practices you would want to have um, set up in this. And it also has all the other sorts of uh, associated tools you might want to have um, uh, running here. And then, uh, you know, there's certain things that haven't actually been deployed out to um, SSF yet, like uh, runtime visibility, but it is one of the things on, that are currently being worked on. So while that's running, I can show you the logs here. Oh, actually it ran and completed already. Um, this is just sort of the build logs here. You can see it generated this image, which, um, you know, it's using uh, ttl.sh, which if you're not aware of, it's just a, a free sort of test um, uh, registry for, you know, pushing out images that you want to expire. So for the sake of this demo, very uh, straightforward. And I can go and validate that Tecton chains here, which is one of the components of SSF, has come through and signed. Yes, it has. So if I run a couple of these other commands here, just to, um, and all I'm just doing is just getting the image URL and, and task run to make some of these other commands a little easier. So if I run crane, which is a um, 
a tool to just uh, that allows me to manipulate and see what's inside of an OCI registry. I can see that, hey, I have an image here. And this image uh, contains a latest and it contains a dot ATT, which if you're not familiar with is just sort of a cosine, uh, sorry, a SIG store based attestation. And it also contains a signature here. And now if I want to go and validate that this image has been signed with the appropriate signature, um, I can go in and, and validate that, right? I can go and check that, yep, it has been signed. Um, Cosign is saying, yes, uh, you know, based on this key, um, yes, uh, sorry, based on this uh, public key, uh, yes, it has been signed. Uh, th that's a valid signature. And then what I can do here is I can also validate that there is a valid attestation with a valid signature. Yep. And so it's able to say that as well. But now let's go and actually take a look at what that attestation is, is telling us. So I can download that attestation um, and, you know, essentially uh, base64 decoded and fetch out the actual data that's in there. So as you can see in here, you know, I have the name of the image. I have a digest of the image. And this is, um, for those who aren't familiar, this is a salsa attestation. And what this tells us is it tells us all sorts of nice little bits of information. This information is coming out of stuff like tecton chains. But in here, I'm able to do things like, um, I'm able to see what are the environment variables, right? I'm able to go and check uh, stuff like, what was the entry point for the build? Uh, what was, um, I can also check uh, in here, what was the builder for the build, right? Like um, in this case, it's using, you know, this sample builder image. Uh, and I can do all sorts of other things. I can see when the build started, when it finished. And all of this metadata is super useful to me when sort of figuring out, you know, did something happen to my build, right? If, if I expected, you know, a particular builder to be, you know, if I expected to use a different kind of builder and it didn't match this, well, then I know something went wrong, right? And I can use all of this metadata coming out of here. And you can imagine if I generated an SBOM, I would have a similar sort of attestation that looks like this, that has all the metadata associated with, um, that SBOM and I'd be able to go and validate that, you know, did that, was that SBOM generated by a build tool that I, you know, um, that I trust? If yes, then, hey, great, you know, we can approve this sort of thing to go to the next level, to be promoted to production, whatever. Um, if I notice that, you know, it's using a, a tool that hasn't been approved, we can control that through stuff like policy as code. All right, so just to kind of quickly show a little bit of what this configuration looks like. Well, the configuration here um, is uh, all in queue and it looks very similar to JSON, um, but what this actually does is using our the rest of our tooling, it allows us to generate um, the YAML configuration for Tecton as well as other things like, um, you know, if we wanted to generate a, an associated policy with the build, we can do that all by sort of generating a single sort of specification here. Um, and so all of this sort of stuff um, allows us to then sort of have some increased confidence around uh, that, you know, a build happened in, uh, in the right order with the right build steps, with the right controls, um, and that all of those different things happened with the right identities signing off on, on those things. And then, you know, those sorts of things help provide increased confidence. And so when you go to production, you can start to, you know, ask uh, via also policy as code using stuff like emission controllers, you can say, does it have a valid, you know, salsa attestation? Does it have a valid signature? Does it have a valid um, SBOM? Uh, does it have a valid SAST and DAS scan with appropriate attestations? Um, do those SAST and DAS scans, you know, meet our policy, you know, for, for no vulnerabilities discovered or whatever, right? Um, 
assuming the answer is yes for all of those, then you can have increased confidence that everything looks good, that your supply chain is secure, and you can then um, approve it and uh, you know do something akin to you know what Google calls binary authorization. But the basic idea just sort of being you know you can sort of stamp your artifact um, uh, for for uh, for use. Anyway, um, that's about it, all I have uh, right now, and I wanted to then um, open it up for questions. <laughs>